What's pro football like in Mexico? I think it's pretty cool if you ask me. Getting the chance to represent Cancun and playing the first ever pro football game in Quintana Roo and on the southeast side of Mexico was a super cool experience to be a part of. I'll never forget coming out of the tunnel and seeing the sunset over the stadium. This definitely has to be one of the coolest overall environments that I've been a part of while overseas playing football. We got the chance to play at the famous Andres Quintana Roo Stadium and we had fans from all different states in attendance. I would have to say there was a little bit more pressure coming into this game and as you all know, pressure is a privilege because unfortunately we had our first loss of the season a week prior to this game. And the team that was coming into town was the Taquileros de Jalisco and they were on a 3-0 start to the season. So this was going to be a big statement game for us as a team. Coming into the season, my team and I only had one month of training camp. I was honored to be selected as one of the captains. It wasn't until after week one that I really felt like our team bonded and came together as international players from America and then the local players down in Cancun. And the FAM, which stands for Football Americano Mexico, each team is allowed 16 international players. Six imports are allowed on the field at a time on both offense, defense, and special teams. I would argue that the level of play down here in Mexico is like none other outside of America and Canada. However, there are teams in Japan and in Europe that definitely could compete with some teams down here in Mexico. But having the 16 import rule definitely makes Mexico stand out compared to football over in Europe and Japan. I was mic'd up for this game, but unfortunately my mic malfunctioned during warm-ups. Big dog! Big dog here! Look at this dude. Bruh, chill. With all that being said about the level of professionalism, the cool environment and atmosphere on game day, there were some moments where it felt like it was a Pop Warner football game. Yeah, this is so awkward. When I saw this on the live stream, after the game I said, oh gosh. During the opening kickoff, as the sun was setting over the stadium, because it was so bright, the majority of the fans were sitting behind our sideline in the shade. And because of that, they were all packed in so close that it was super loud. On the opening drive, I was really proud with how our defense played. They really came firing out on all cylinders. I was really hyped to see number nine, my roommate, Philip Redwine, bat down the ball on third down. After the batted down ball, the Taquileros decided to go for it on fourth down, and our defense got a big stop and got the offense the ball in the Taquileros' home territory. After the fourth down stop, the crowd was roaring, and it was now time for our offense to take the field. Big thanks to Green Gridiron for hooking me up with a custom football helmet for this upcoming season. Green Gridiron is my one-stop shop for all football accessories. Do me a favor and use my QR code affiliate link to visit greengridiron.com to help support my channel. The goal is to get the run game going early on, but the Taquileros came firing out on the defensive line. We were faced with a third and nine in our first drive, and I knew it was about time to start getting the ball in the air into my playmaker's hands. As a quarterback, once you get your first completion, all you really want to do is throw the ball, and that's pretty much what we did this first drive. My goal is to get my ball into my playmaker's hands, and that's what I did the whole way down the field. And we finished off the drive with a little tight end delay right down the middle of the field to score the first ever touchdown in Cancun history. It was cool looking over at the sideline and seeing my teammates all erupt after we scored and seeing the crowd go crazy. As an offense, this was the best well-executed drive that I felt we had put together as a unit. Good shit. Good shit. Good shit. That was a beautiful drive. Yes. Beautiful drive. Let's go. The next series again, our defense really came firing all out and really was putting pressure on the Tucky Little's quarterback. I learned during practice that our defensive coordinator loves sending different blitz packages. 
And on this second drive, he was doing just that. The start of the second drive, my offensive line came firing out and really was opening up the holes for my running back, number three, Caleb Stennis. Things definitely started to get a little bit chippy as my offensive line was totally dominating the Takiletto's defensive front and linebacker core. As they say, the run game always opens up the passing game. And facing a second and 15, I call the play called 50 Colt, which is a three by one play with a corner route by the tight end and two five yard ends by the slot and outside receiver. And just like that, I got to give my 6'6 tight end a chance to make a play in the end zone. And in a little bit of double coverage, he gets the job done. I get chills remembering what it was like running off the field, seeing my teammates all excited. Week one, we ended up only scoring 12 points the entire game. So coming into week two, scoring 14 unanswered points in the first quarter, it definitely was a big confidence booster for the offense as a whole. Night and day, night and day, bro. Night and day. Our defense came out on the third possession and made a big statement with our first turnover of the season. My boy number eight, Malik Brown, was able to take the interception back all the way down to the 25-yard line. Unfortunately, we had two unsportsmanlike conduct calls, so our offense was backed up to our own 45. On the return, my boy Malik said, give me that stiffy. Pause. I remember before coming out for this third possession, talking with coach on the sideline, and he told me he wanted to continue to attack the Takiletto secondary. After having a holding penalty on first down, we were faced with a first and 20, and my coach called in a play called 50 Jets, which is a three by one route combination, and all my guys are going vertical down the field. The Takiletto's defense ended up dropping eight guys into coverage. My offensive line gave me at least seven seconds in the pocket, and they gave me just enough time to deliver a strike down the field for my third touchdown of the game. I made sure I took the time to celebrate with my offensive line before running down to celebrate with my receivers. I was on cloud nine coming off the field on this third possession. There's nothing like scoring on back to back to back drives. Being able to put up 20 unanswered points and having our defense play as well as they were, I really felt this as a team coming together. Hey, nice job, man. Let's go. Nice job, man. Let's, Let's, go. Go. Let's go. Let's go. This was the first time since college that I had some friends in the stands and my family back home was able to watch the game in real time. While I was on the sidelines, I remember looking over and in the front row box seats, I saw some of my mentors and good friends. And it was a cool feeling knowing that they were proud of me with my performance this far in the game. You got away with one there, kid. <laughs> get the ball out of your head yeah, you next time. Just keep playing well, man. Keep throwing touchdowns. Let's go, D. I need to see it, eh? This is what we needed. First home game in Cancun history. One of the coolest parts definitely had to be the Jets flying over the stadium after we just put up 20 points. It wasn't until the fourth possession that the Tucky Little's offense was able to put themselves a drive together. They managed to drive the ball all the way down the field and due to penalties, get themselves in real good scoring position. Even though the Tucky Little's ended up putting up some points, I was really happy with how our defense played in the first half. This next possession, our offense definitely was faced with some adversity. On third and nine, I managed to scramble and pick up a first down, but unfortunately we faced a holding call. After getting backed up, facing the holding call, getting ready for a third and 19, seeing that the Takiletos were staying in a cover three, I signaled over to coach a play called Texan, which is basically a double post that's gonna attack this free safety in the middle, and he's gonna have to pick and choose which receiver to cover. Sure enough, coach was okay with the play call and gave me the green light. To this day, this has to be the best throw of my football career. I remember catching the ball, taking a three-step drop, looking off the safety before making the throw to the outside post to my boy J.D. Crandall, number five, and putting the ball low to only where he could get it, but to where we also could convert on third and 19. And I'll tell you what, it's a dang good feeling making a big completion on third and long and strutting down the field, getting ready for a new play call and a brand new set of downs. On second and three, we had a bad snap, which really stalled this drive as a whole. Thankfully, I was able to duck and dodge before I was about to take a big clean hit. We ended up facing a fourth and three, and as quarterback, I totally take full responsibility for not executing on this play. We had a pass play called in the huddle. I should have checked it to a run with how much success our offensive line was having up front. And I did what no quarterback should ever do on fourth down, which is take a big sack. This has to be one of the worst feelings in the world 
when your offensive line is trying to figure out why you just got sacked on a fourth and three quick game. I gotta be better. The very next play when the Tucky Littles got the ball, we unfortunately only had 11 guys on the field and they pounded the ball right down our throats, all the way down the field for a touchdown. Coming back out on the field after a huge momentum change, we were also faced with a two minute drill as an offense to try to score before halftime. Something that I've started to experience while playing football overseas is that a lot of players love to talk trash to me. And in this case, number 94 from the Tucky Littles was doing everything that he could to try to get me to say something back to him. So as much as I love to talk trash, I'm now getting to the point in my career where it's better that I don't say anything. And I do get a little bit of satisfaction not saying a word back to him. This next play, I had some miscommunication with my receiver, and at the end of the day, that's still my fault. I remember letting the ball fly and seeing my boy JD throttle down to slow down in the fade zone, and I just thought, please don't pick it, please don't pick it, please don't pick it, and sure enough, I got picked off. Obviously, as an offense, this was really frustrating, but because we were performing so well in this first half, I really wanted to make a statement and score before the end of the first half. The worst part about the interception is having my offensive lineman turn around and look at me with frustration, not knowing that there was miscommunication during the play. After the interception, our defense made a good stop and we went into halftime up 20 to 14. Before heading into the locker room, it was cool to get the chance to see some of my mentors and friends and get some words of encouragement from them after really not finishing out the first half like I had expected. And then getting to see some of the fans before heading into the locker room definitely cheered me up. After a really well executed first quarter and a not so well executed second quarter, I was really happy and proud with how our defense played this whole first half. Heading into halftime only up 20 to 14 isn't exactly what we wanted, but football being a four quarter game, we knew coming out of halftime that it was going to be really important to execute and finish this game strong. And we really wanted to show out for our fans here in Cancun during our first home game. Now this is where things get interesting. It was decided before the game that I was going to start the first half and in the second half I was going to be benched. I'm not starting this second half, we're going to get some of the local guys in a quarter. It was a little bit frustrating for me because I thought I had a good performance in the first half, although I didn't finish as strong as I wanted to. I do have a lot of respect for my backup quarterback, and I respectfully handed him over the keys to take over the offense. So as a whole, our offense ended up not scoring at all in the second half, and our defense is what really kept us in this game and overall won this game. We forced about five interceptions in the second half alone. Our offense did do a good job driving the ball down the field and chewing up a lot of clock and also gave our defense a good rest for when they were to go back out on the field. Interception after interception after interception. I could not be more proud with how our defense played. The game, however, did come down to the final drive. Taki Little's having the ball in our own territory. We ended up putting our 6'6 tight end Ari Wirtz out on the field as the Taki Little's were attempting a Hail Mary to try to win the game. And he also ended up being the one that got the interception. It was so cool when he intercepted the ball in the end zone, the crowd went crazy. The whole team rushed the sideline out onto the field, but we managed as a team to win the game 20-14, to 14, all thanks to our defense. It was also cool because we really came into this game as an underdog, losing our first game of the season and, you know, playing a team that was already 3-0 and and giving them their first loss. But nothing beats making history and winning the first game in Cancun, and that's always something I'm never going to forget. Thank you for the first half, man. You're welcome. Appreciate you. Thank you. Yeah. This man right here, yeah, you see this? That's the man right there, baby. Even though I was pulled out of the game, I was doing my part to support the other quarterback that was in the game, as well as making sure I was hyping up the fans. And man, I could not be happier after we got the interception in the end zone and secured the win. I think it's super important for players to remember that adversity is a good thing. When you're faced with it, it's all about how you bounce back from it. Even if you throw an interception or you get pulled halfway through a game, you still gotta make sure you're supporting your teammates and your coaches, and that really reveals your character as a player. I never thought I'd end up down here in Cancun playing football, and it's never something that I dreamed about as a kid growing up. My dream was always to play in the NFL, and I never thought that, you know, getting the chance to play professional football in Mexico would be a thing until two years ago when I ended up moving down here to Mexico. I met some good friends and mentors, and they helped immerse me into the culture and really encouraged me to pursue the professional opportunities of playing football down here. So I was really soaking up this experience and really feeling the level of professionalism down here in Mexico and in this environment in Cancun for our first home game. It was definitely an experience that I'm never going to forget about. Got Parky right here, baby. One and only. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah.